Welcome to 5-Minute Lessons. I am Victor. For today's episode, we are going to talk about Google Forms. We know that teachers commonly use this tool to get details from students, and this is even used to create assessments. Google Forms is not only useful for teachers, the students use this too. For example, when they collect data from respondents for their research subjects. I invited some of my brilliant students from past semesters to show how they used Google Forms. To review what is Google Forms and to show how to save and create questions with multiple choice and checkbox, we have Jevon to demo. For creating short and paragraph answers, let us talk to Cedric later. For creating questions with answers in drop-down and with file upload, here's Dwight to share. And for creating questions with linear scale, multiple choice grid, and checkbox grid, Nale will help us. Now let's start. Let us first have Jevon to tell us what is Google Forms, how to save, and how to create questions with multiple choice and checkbox. Go ahead, Jevon. Okay, so good day, everyone. So I'm here to teach you the basics about Google Forms. We all know that Google allows us to use Sheets, Docs, Slides, and a lot more. These are all part of Google's online tools for free. But to be able to easily make survey forms, directory, checkout page, quizzes, and other forms in minutes, Google Forms makes the best tool. Like all else, Google Forms comes free with your Google account. So let us begin. This is the home page of Google Forms. Click on the blank page so we can get started. So before we begin, allow me to introduce to you the general parts of the Google Forms. On the upper left part is where you should enter the file name. Suppose that this is a quiz about sports. At the center part, enter the name of the form followed by the description. There you have it. Before we input the questions, we can see the tab beside the question bar. Click on it. You will see different options on how your respondents may answer your form. For now, we will choose the multiple choice type of quiz. Beside this tab, we have various logos. We have add question, depending on the numbers of items you plan to make. Import questions might come from your previous forms. And if you have to attach a title, description, an image, a video, or a new section, you may click on the following options. On the upper right part, we have three logos. First, the paint palette is for theme options where you can freely customize the color, background, and the font style of your preference. The eye is for preview. Click on this if you want to view how your respondents are going to see your form. We will use that after we're finished. And obviously, this is the settings. This is very important. Click on it. Under the general tab, we have collect email addresses. Activating this means gathering the email addresses of your respondents. We are going to require them to sign in with their accounts. We are going to click on this one. To ensure that your respondents will remain true with their answers and will not be able to change them after they have submitted and to keep them from seeing other responses, we are not going to click on these two boxes. Next, we have the presentation tab. You may want to show progress, you may want to shuffle question order per respondents, and you may want to show link to submit another response. And you may also write a confirmation message that will appear after respondents have clicked on the submit button. Under the last tab, enable make this a quiz option to allow auto grading and point values to every question. You may choose on these two options displayed on the procedures how the grades of your respondents are going to be released. You may want to check these three remaining boxes after all your respondents have submitted for manual rechecking and so they will not see them. Save. Let's now proceed to writing down our questions. We can now add the choices. We could also add image in place of our word choices. We can now add more questions by clicking Add Question. After writing them all down, 
Below is the answer key. This is when we get to pick for the right answer along with its corresponding points. After writing down all of them, we can see the number of points in total for this section right here. We have three other options below each question. We have duplicate, if you wish to copy exact same questions and choices, delete, and if you will require your respondents to answer the quiz, click on this one. We are now going to the responses. You may disable it after all your respondents have submitted or if the time limit has been reached and you will no longer expect any responses, but for now, we will keep it activated. Now, we can look at the preview and see. We can now proceed to the send button for you to get the link of the form you made to be sent to your respondents. Oh, but we're not done yet. We are now going to try using the check boxes option. Suppose that you belong to a group of grade 7 students and conducting a survey about pets for your minor subject. As you can see, I tried playing with customizing my form to capture the attention of my respondents. The difference here with the multiple choice option, we can check as many as we want. We can give it a try on the preview. On the settings, we could retain all the setup we made a couple of minutes ago, except for enabling the Make This a Quiz option. We are now making a survey with no correct answers. And you're done! Wow, that's very informative and clear, Jevon. Let's continue. Cedric will demo how to create questions that would require short and paragraph answers. I heard that Cedric will demo using his mobile phone. Let's see how he'll do these tasks. Cedric? Look for your browser and then search for forms.google.com. This is what it should look like if you already signed in your account in your browser. If not, you have to to access Google Forms. And then look for multiple choice since it is a default. There you could have short answer or paragraph option. And then you may proceed to your desired question. Then you may click the duplicate button and then repeat the same process. Notice that it always goes back to default, which is multiple choice. Make sure to double check and put it in your desired option, in this case, short answer. Don't forget to click required to necessary information. If you are to make this questionnaire a quiz, go to settings and then look for quizzes beside presentation and activate the make this a quiz button and then click save. Of course, don't forget to rename your form. In this case, quiz. Make sure to put the answer and the corresponding points to each of your questions. If you think you're already done, make sure to double check using the preview button before sending. Great job! This proves that even in smartphones, you can be productive and create forms. Cedric did not only show us how to create questions with short and paragraph answers, he extended his demo on how to make the form graded. Thank you for that, Cedric! Now. Let's go ahead and hear from Dwight how to create questions that will allow us to use drop-down and upload file options in Google Forms. Yes, you heard me right. We can let our respondents upload a file. I learned that he is going to demo using his mobile phone too. Are you ready, Dwight? So I will teach you how to have file upload in Google Forms. So in this case, I will choose Storybook Cover as a preferred answer 
in this question and I will choose file upload in these choices and it will show you this the maximum number of files that you want and maximum file size that you want you can also allow only specific file types that you want to be attached in this question so we will choose one as the number of files the maximum file size as one gig so we will choose document and there let us preview this question as a respondent So as you can see we can add file and we can choose files from our device so for example we will have documents so there we can upload and there you have it you already uploaded a file or a document in the question that's just how simple you can do a file upload in a Google Form. I'm going to teach you on how to have drop down choices in Google Form. So as you can see, I set region as an example so that we will have many choices to see the difference in multiple choice and drop down easily. So let us preview the question as a respondent. As you can see, we have many choices and it's taking too much space and we will scroll so long. So here, when we turn it into a drop-down, we can see the difference of drop-down and multiple choice. So let's go back in making the form. So here, as you can see, we will change the multiple choice into drop-down. So choose drop-down. And there, let us go back in previewing the question. So refresh. And there, you can see the difference between multiple choice and drop-down. Drop down will not take too much space unlike the multiple choice. So there's the difference between drop down and multiple choice. Nice one Dwight! But I suggest that we use a smaller file size if we are just expecting text or document files to be uploaded by your respondents. Regarding the drop down option, I totally agree with you that it comes handy when we don't want our options to consume a lot of screen space. Now let's get going. Here's Nale to show how she creates questions with linear scale, multiple choice grid, and checkbox grid. Nale, please start. This is how to create questions with linear scale, multiple choice grid, and checkbox grid. So first, go to your Google Drive. Then on the upper left corner, you can see new. Click it and click more. Then choose Google Forms. This will automatically direct you to create your own Google Form. As you can see, you can change the title, description, and also the questions. On the right side, you can choose other options here. For example, you have a research and you want to have a survey on students about your paper. You may use the linear scale option. So for linear scale, you can change the, the title here and also the description. Then. You can click this untitled question and change it to what question you have. You can choose between 0 to 1 as the lowest, so I will choose 1, and 2 to 10 as the highest. I will choose 5. You can also put labels here, but it is totally optional. On the upper right side, you can see here an I button in which you can see a preview of your Google Form. This it is what it looks like for students. So if you want to add more questions, you can click this icon here to duplicate and change the question. You can also delete it by clicking this trash button here. For multiple choice grid, I can just change it here. So click this button, then click multiple choice grid. Just change the title description and also the question. For the question, I will type is the research paper helpful? For row 1, I will put topic is relevant. For row 2, I will put topic is timely. For the columns, this is the questions or the options that they can choose when they answer. I will put yes, no, and maybe. So you can click this 
require a response in each row here so that the respondents will be required to answer this question. Then just click the I button again to see a preview of your Google form. This is what it looks like for the respondents. And lastly, for checkbox grid, I will just change this into checkboxes. Then change, again, the title and description. Then just click this again to change the question. Change the answers or the options for their answers. And click add other for other options. Then to add another question, just click this button here to duplicate and add another question. Then, if you misclicked it and you want to delete, just click this trash button here. And finally, click the I button to see a preview of your Google Form. As you can see, it is a very easy task to make or Google Form is very accessible to all and it is also very helpful. When students answer your Google form, you can see it from this tab, which is responses. And you can also see who answered your Google form. That's impressive! You presented those options clearly and it appears very effortless. You expanded your discussion until the respondents tab. Allow me to continue that part. I would just like to add these two topics before we end this video recording. Now, how do we stop accepting responses? For example, I have this Google form. Go to Responses tab. Simply switch off the Accepting Responses toggle button. You will see a label that it's no longer accepting responses. You may enter message for respondents, like this form is no longer accepting responses. That's simple, right? Now, how do we transfer all the responses from Forms to Spreadsheet? In Responses tab, click the Create Spreadsheet symbol. On the pop-up window, select Create a new spreadsheet and specify the file name if it's the first time or if you want to create a new spreadsheet. Or, choose Select Existing Spreadsheet if you have created a spreadsheet for this before. This option will simply update the existing file. Then click Create. A spreadsheet file will be created and saved in your drive. This file can be shared and you can also print. Before I end this video recording, I would like to thank Jevon, Cedric, Dwight, and Nale. I'm sure your fellow students learned from your easy-to-follow steps. I appreciate your effort for making your time available to join me today. We would love to have you back again for our next episodes. For questions or any feedback, kindly write on the comment section below. Please like and share this video so others will know how Google Forms can be used. Again, this is Victor from 5-Minute Lessons. Thank you all for watching.